Stuart, could you describe what the Kundalini energy feels like? No, <laughs> I can't. You know, I mean, look, this has got Kundalini has to be a unique experience for everyone who goes through it. And it's not going to be some, you know, I, I don't know, pedestrian kind of you know, an energy that's the same for everybody. It just doesn't work that way. So I don't know how you're going to experience Kundalini. I don't know how anybody in this class is going to experience Kundalini. You know, I do know that I've experienced it and it opens up channels of vision and of energy that are remarkable. You know, it opens up the crown chakra and allows the soul to become, you know, one with the higher force in the universe. I've experienced this. I've been through it. I still go through it. <clears throat> but is there a cross the board experience that everybody's going to have who, you know, experiences Kundalini? You know, there's no answer to that question. I don't know. I, I would think that each human being is unique and each human being is going to experience it in their own way. So, you stumped me, dear. I don't have an answer for that question. Thank you, Stuart. It was um, because when a karma burns, I feel like it's very hot, right? The heat just like all of a sudden I'm burning up. And then I have different uh, experiences. And I wasn't sure if it was just karma burning up or possibly Kundalini. So thank you for that. It's Kundalini burning up your karma. That's what it is. The heat, the fire, the energy gotcha. is burning up karma, not only karma from this lifetime, but last lifetime and God knows maybe 20 lifetimes past is being burnt up by Kundalini. I mean, Kundalini is like an incinerator at the base of the spine and all of our humanity feeds it as the energy goes through the sexual area. You understand it then feeds the kundalini, transforms the human to the spiritual. So it burns up all of karma. You know, and certainly lessens, you know, what karma we have to work out in the world. And if the heart's open and the mind is quiet and there's love and compassion, and I mean, that also burns up karma transforms, you know, our karma. It, it really is probably the most extraordinary way of working out just God is love. Everything around us is a miracle of God. Everything around us is our teacher. And that takes place when the heart opens. So that's another way of getting free of karma. Thank you, Stuart. I had such a strong uh, feeling of love energy. It was beautiful. Good. Good. It means that what we're doing, Paula, is working for you. God bless you. Does anyone else have a question I would like to ask? I have a question, Stuart. It's Christine. Could you talk about um, forgiving ourselves versus forgiving others, forgiving ourselves? Forgiving yourself is not an opposition to forgiving others. You'll never be able to forgive others if you can't forgive yourself. These things work together. I mean, if you're angry at yourself <laughs> for something you did 10 years ago, I mean, you can't get past that anger unless you learned how to forgive yourself. That's the first person we have to learn how to forgive is ourselves. Because if you don't do that, there's always gonna be something inside that's gonna be angry and revengeful and upset about the world. 
So you start, you know, at A and you work your way through the alphabet, you know? So I think that you shouldn't put these things in opposition to each other. They're not, one is not against the other, they work together. Forgiving yourself is the first step in learning how to forgive everything that anyone's done to you in your life that you have resented. Does anyone else have a question? Thank you. You're welcome. Stuart, um, I'll ask you with a question to the heart and the Kundalini, if the heart's open, does that mean the Kundalini is rising and in like mo open flow or not necessarily? Not necessarily. You know, you could be with your heart open and the Kundalini is not rising. So then it's a matter of drawing energy through the sexual area to the base of the spine. That energy will activate Kundalini. Understand? I mean, the key is being centered in the, in the, in the chakra below the navel, because that really is the, it's the point in the triangle that connects the human to the divine. And that point makes it possible for us to draw energy through the sex, to keep the heart open, to keep the mind quiet. That point makes it possible for us to do all these things. But because the heart is open, it doesn't mean Kundalini is gonna be activated. If you draw energy through the sex, you know, and that energy will activate the Kundalini. So each of the chakras it works in a different way, but by staying centered below the navel, we can work with each chakra. The mind can be quiet, the heart can be open, sexual energy, you know, can be internalized, Kundalini can be activated. All of that, we need the strength. You understand, it's like the tree of life needs its roots in order to expand endlessly into the cosmos. Because the mind is quiet, it doesn't mean Kundalini is activated. Because Kundalini is activated, sometimes that happens and the mind isn't quiet. But all of it works when we get grounded and centered and we really are focused at that point in the triangle that connects the human to the divine. And the whole point of the meditation is to transform the human to the spiritual. And that transformation ultimately brings enlightenment, freedom, oneness with God. Does anyone else have a question they would like to? And, you know, life doesn't have to be so serious, you know, it could be fun, we can enjoy ourselves, we can live in the world and be grateful for the life we have and our interaction with people and what life brings to us. And I mean, really, you know, I mean, there has to be a lightness of being in order for all of these things to work inside us. If we're always down on ourselves, if we're heavy and angry and upset at the world, these things don't work. We're so full of our, ourselves that we don't make room for anything to come in. So the lightness of being is essential. You 
And trust me, I know enough about heaviness of being <laughs> to never want to go back there anymore. I'm not interested. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? You know, I'll just announce it again. I'll, I'll probably announce it ad nauseum until the ninth of this month. You know, I'm going to be doing an interview on Zoom with Daniel Costa about my book, Navigating the River of Time. The purpose originally was to bring the, tr the Portuguese translation to Brazilian people. But I realized this book is in both English and Portuguese. So all of you will get an invitation. I hope you come to the you know, interview. And if you know people that are interested in hearing about this, learning about this, you know, they should get in touch with me because I'm gonna need to have their email address in order to put them on the Zoom mailing list. So I think it's gonna be a very interesting interview. I mean, Daniel did a great translation. Although I can't read Portuguese, I'm being told this by anyone who's read the book, that the translation is really good. And I'm really excited about this. Maybe finding a few new students, people that are looking for a spiritual life, might be just another way. I don't know. You know, again, it's just throwing it out there. We'll see what comes back. So that's going to be on the 9th of August at 11 o'clock my time which is what, about nine o'clock, no, eight o'clock in the morning on the West Coast and 12 noon in Brazil. Does anyone else have a question they'd like to ask? Okay, once again, God bless you all and thank you for being part of this and allowing this meditation, Zoom, these sessions to happen. And I really am very grateful to be here, to be part of this and to be able to share the things I've learned in my life with all of you. So bless you all and thank you. And there'll be a class on Thursday and I'm hoping to see you all there. If you know anybody that's interested in coming to the meditation, have them get in touch with me. I'll be happy to talk with them and, you know, uh, show them the exercise and welcome them to the classes. So bless you all. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. And I hope I see everybody on Thursday. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you.